Me and my buddy Jared just got done riding this thing from Charlotte, North Carolina to Pennsylvania. Had a blast. Actually, correction, I was on a different bike. He rode this bike. Cue the intro. What's up, guys? I'm Sean from SRK Cycles. This is a 1999 Triumph Thunderbird Sport. When the Thunderbird came out, it was in the 1950s. And it was a it was a twin, it was a, a parallel twin, and it was 650. And then later, the most recent Thunderbird came out in 2009, and that's also a twin, but with a 1500 cc motor. And they also came with a different alterations that had like 1600 cc's. It was a big, bad muscle bike cruiser. Before it's kind of a sport bike. And then in the middle, in 19, in between 1997 and I think 2004, they made the Triumph Thunderbird Sport. I'm gonna tell you guys all about the Triumph Sport, why it's an awesome bike. We're gonna do a test drive on it and stay to the end when we're gonna do a run of zero to 60 on this thing, real life. All right guys, let's do the words of wisdom. Acts 319, therefore repent and return so that your sins may be wiped away in order that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Amen. If you guys are wondering, this, this motorcycle test drive is sponsored by this video, by a video we actually, uh, me and my buddy Jared, I flew down to Charlotte, he lives in Charlotte. We bought this bike and another bike in one day and we rode them back. The, the goal was to do it in one day. It didn't actually work that way. If you guys want to see the video of us doing this, of, this, of us buying this bike, it's a two-part, it's like a three-part series. The third part is coming out next Friday. If you want to see the video series of us buying and riding these bikes um, about 600 miles or on Route 11, go check that out. It was a lot of fun. And that is who this video is sponsored by. So it was a blast. Um, Jared spent most of his time riding this bike, and I was riding uh, a BMW. But the few times I did get to hop on this thing, I was like, wow, this thing is fun. It feels much more like a modern bike than it does a 1999. A lot of times you think of a 1999, that's a long time ago. That's almost, no, that is exactly 20 years ago. What's great, you put the choke on, you, it fires right up. Give it, a, give it 30 seconds, take the choke off, it runs perfect. It runs perfect. This is the same engine as the normal Triumph Thunderbird. But with the Sport, it comes with different carburetors it produces 14 more horsepower so instead of like 60 something it's like 82 it's got twin rotors on the front and also it comes with a six-speed gearbox they had a couple different exhaust configurations for the triumph thunderbird sport sometimes they were dual on both sides this one is the three into two which i think looks pretty awesome you also notice that they're kind of going for that air-cooled style but it's in actuality it's actually water cooled they got the they got the radiator up here kind of hidden kind of nice and secret it also has this classic triumph badge you know what i mean with like the old casting the old casting dimples and stuff inside of it got that real good retro look but with a modern feel to it i would consider this bike if i had to compare this to another bike this was the 1999 version of a yamaha fc07 and it's got a lot of similarities to it it's not a four cylinder like the other sport bikes, you know what I mean? It's not a twin. Um, the FC07 is a parallel twin. This is actually a triple. So maybe this might compare more to the FC09, but I'm choosing the FC07. Um, both are just really, really, really nimble. I would say this this seems to feel a little more comfortable. Now, the FC09 is just twitchy as anything, which I love. And, and first, second, third gear can, can pop wheelies just without it, we're just thinking about it. Uh, this can this is not like that they're both extremely nimble but this is actually set up for this can do those higher speeds a little bit better you're gonna feel more comfortable I think um, probably because the rake and the wheelbase might be a little bit longer on this I know personally I don't feel as comfortable when you're going 80 miles an hour on an FC07 you're, you you feel good like, like that that's about it on this on a close course track you know what I mean 110 was you know it's fine so weighing in at just under 500 pounds, pushing around 82 horsepower, it's actually a pretty pretty stout little motorcycle. I would compare this to like a modern day FC07, except for the way this thing's geared out. It's, little, it's got little taller gears and it feels much more comfortable at those higher speeds, closer to triple digits on a closed course racetrack. All right, let's do the zero to six. Let's see what this thing does. Anytime you brake, anytime you brake kind of heavy, you gotta be looking two, two places in front of you almost more importantly look look be look at what's behind you because you can break way faster than the, almost any car on the road except for my adam and uh you don't want someone rear-ending you there 
when this bike came out in the, in the late 90s, the cool thing about it was you got the awesome styling. This is what Triumph's always been known for. It was awesome, you know, 60s, 50s, 40s motorcycle styling, but you have modern technology. Now, what this is is a setup where it looks like a classic bike, but it was, it kind of ran like a sport bike of the 90s. Now today, it really wouldn't, I mean, even, even back then, it really didn't hold up with the sport bikes. Today, it wouldn't hold up with the sport bikes. This would still definitely, I think, compete and win against a current, you know, 2019 Bonneville. And I just, I really enjoyed the way this thing felt. Heavy braking, no! Your brakes feel great. The guy who had this before me, he, uh, he had it jetted properly for the exhaust. He did the fork sails. He actually wasn't trying to sell this motorcycle. This bike, we, uh, he, he, the guy looked over everything and had it running just perfect. He wasn't trying to sell it, but I was like, hey man, I need two bikes, I'm going on a trip. Can I buy that one? Give me that one, please, 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 please. And uh, eventually he sold it to me. And if you were to ask the question, would that be reliable to take across the country? Well, we proved that would be. The ergonomics of it make it extremely comfortable. My buddy rode this thing about, you know, 400 miles in a day. He really enjoyed it. It braked well, it accelerated well, and really hit the corners very well. So some of the great things about this bike, this bike is fast, this bike is fun, this bike handles, you can do highway on it. It just does a lot of things really well. We took this thing off road a little bit, like on gravel roads. It's really comfortable on the highway. It just does a lot of things so well, but it's not going to crush you in the insurance department. It's not going to be that much. It's not an R bike. It's not a super sport. You know what I mean? But it's just so much. It's just a, a blast to drive. It's going to be simple to maintain. And it looks so awesome. It looks so retro. It's kind of unsuspecting of how, uh, of the performance of this bike. Let's get up the, let's get, let's get up the highway speeds. this guy's going so slow tires are gonna be cheap for this thing um, there really is just no downside to this bike now I've, I've driven a lot of Bonnevilles um, I love them they're great I think this is more comfortable. I like this a little more sporty. Instead of sitting on top of it, you're kind of sitting inside of it. I look where my hands rest. Definitely more comfortable than I think the Thruxton, where the Thruxton's got you know real low bars. Thruxton's a little sportier, but I think this will outperform either one of those bikes. Right? Not not the Thruxton 1200 though. I'm talking like the uh, what is it, 875, 865. Even though this bike is not the best at anything, it does a lot of things just very well in terms of looks and rideability. The acceleration is great. This bike could, it's, it's, it's on that border. If you rode dirt bikes when you were a kid or something like that, you know, this could be a great first starter bike. It's gonna be cheap. It's also a good bike that you can just own for the rest of your life because it's unique enough. It's good looking. It's just that classic styling, but it's very comfortable. I mean, it's extremely comfortable. Now you'll notice that the handlebars are actually bent. This one's bent back a little bit. So if we don't replace the handlebars, you're gonna have to replace the handlebars. <laughs> I think Jared just got used to riding it this way. It kind of drives me nuts. But the, uh, the Thunderbird Sport's a very unique bike and and it's got its own little following and people really like them when you like British bikes. What's cool about it is, you know, we put 600 miles on it. I didn't notice any weird British bike, quirky, you know, strange things. It just seemed like a fairly modern bike with a carburetor on. And it ran, it ran flawless. The Thunderbird Sports have a pretty good following. I really didn't know about this bike until I bought one. It's got a pretty, uh, pretty unique following to them. A lot of people really like them because they only made them for a couple years. And normally people can notice those different configurations with the exhaust. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a 99 or oh, that's a 2000. I don't know all that much about them. I just know it was really fun to ride. So if you're looking for a good modern motorcycle, for a good price that looks classic, that people are like, hey, what year is that? You know what I mean? You tell them, you're like, hey, it's a 1972. And they're like, oh, wow. You know, and they, how are they gonna know? How are they gonna know? Which I really do like about, about Triumph. They've done a good job at keeping, at keeping that classic style and not changing it much, but then still having a modern, modern motorcycle, you know, models in their lineup but then also modernizing the classic ones to still look classic, but be more reliable and perform better. It's, it's the best of both worlds. When you find a style that looks good, 
keep on making it. But then they're also not staying in their ways and they also have cool other bikes, you know? We also made a three part video series of me and my buddy uh, going to Charlotte. It's a really good video series. Going to show you. That's on the Bikes and Beards channel. Um, we'll put it in the link at the end. We made, we made a three part video series of us going to buy this bike and attempting to drive two bikes. My bike was a 1975 BMW R90. Uh, 50 year old bike, no 45 year old bike, and it was a lot of fun. You guys need to check this out. So if you guys are interested in buying this bike, you can go to srkcycles.com. We have this and a 60 other bikes for sale. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, it is not what you're riding, but where are you going? Hey, it's my UPS lady. She's the best. No joke. Hardest working woman in the world.